welcome to the Four Stacks Beer Show. I'm your host, Nathan Hangen. Beside me is the bearded beauty known mm -hmm. as Mike uh, Fry. There you go. Mike Gotta... Fry, who also likes to fray all day. I fray all day, all the time. Yeah. Literally all day. Uh, you can find out how to learn more about us uh, in the show notes. You can follow us on social media. Uh, we don't really have any blogs or personal websites. I used to, but... No, it takes up too much time. Yeah, we're too yeah. busy working. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. yeah. So we, we actually, I don't know about you, but I, you know, I'm trying to get more into the Instagram these days, uh, but it's, I don't really do the Facebooks, uh, it's, but it's tough. I'm, I'm busy. I don't really have anything post-worthy. You know, besides what we're doing here. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I'm, I'm about the same. I think if you, you know, on my Instagram feed, I think it's just a lot of um, every time I get a growler or something filled or I'm yeah. drinking, either when I'm drinking or I'm cooking. Generally, the two two things that you'll see uh, on, on my Instagram, so it's not very exciting. Which is something you probably do all the time, drinking or cooking. Pretty much, yeah. Except yeah. when you're here. Pretty much, yeah. I, I don't do, uh, well, I mean, I'll take a picture of every time that I cook. If it's something, you know, crazy, like if I'm if I'm cooking something on the smoker or on the grill or I'm yeah. cooking something crazy in the oven, maybe I'll take a picture of that. What's it, what was something crazy in the oven would, would be? Probably like a lasagna. Or like the veggie stuff that you make for me? Yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah, that too. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of which, there's a big party this weekend. There, there Bottle is. Bottle share. It is, yeah. Big, bring out the whales and this and that. We're going to visit the cellar. We should do, we should we do a show live from Mike's we, cellar. I actually thought about doing, uh, talked about doing a no show at the house. Us, oh, she already hates it to begin with, so. <laughs> um, Just feed your big ego. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we could. You could see, I actually filled more bottles over the weekend into the cellar, so. Did you? I did, so. Uh, I had to go pick up my uh, Catador bottles, the oh. uh, six-gen Catador, so those were all now sitting in there, and. I'm going to try to drink some of the second series ones that I still haven't had a chance to drink yet. That'll be try to do that this week and amongst everyone else's and all the other What's beer It's tough when have. breaking open bottles, like it has to feel right. We've talked about this a little bit, tailgating, bottle shares, but otherwise, yeah. it, like you feel like a, a lush if you just open one up on a you Tuesday do. If, night. Yeah, if you take one to the dome, you know, a lot of people do that. They'll just have one of those nights where they'll put a 750 milliliter bottle to the dome and it's... That's a that's a that's a long night. It's like family game night at my house with playing like Little Risk or something like that. Yeah. Bust out like a <laughs> maple bacon coffee <laughs> porter. <laughs> playing Risk. Yeah, that's it. That's, risk has become a thing in our house. That's because that's what I do at family night. Yeah, not sorry or long, you know, or any of those. Uh, I play Risk. Well, I am the master of Risk, so it only makes sense. <clears throat> okay. My my young children love to take on their father and, and attempt to uh, beat me. They secretly all hate you. Yes, it's true. Yeah. Alliance against dad. But yeah. anyway, enough about us. This is um, American Craft Beer Week. It is. And Got we're right. excited because uh, yeah, we had Tampa Beer Week, which was gosh, not that long ago. No, uh, it was in February. February. Okay. Yeah. Isn't halfway there closer to that time frame? March, February, March. So Beer Week is like closer to. I get them confused to be honest with you. Well, it would be six months from February, yeah. so. Either way, it would be Tampa about, Beer Week It came, would be in about August. It came and went yeah. last time, and we didn't get a chance to really do anything special as a, as a brewery because we were just busy. We had a lot going on. We were, we were selling through the tap room a lot of beer, and we just had to sort of crank out our, our mm -hmm. mainstays and staples. Um, but this time, for, for American Craft Beer Week, we got to make some special stuff, which we're really excited to debut today. So it's a bit of a special show. We don't really have a, a trip to Mike's cellar today nope. because we're going to nope. um, go with four or three four stacks beers, but we are going to finish as always with um, with the mystery beer. Yes, Dave has been yes. kind enough to grab us one from the, from the grocery store. Uh, he did say it's it's potentially warm now, so that could that could stir things up. It again. could it could just a little bit. I mean, it, you know, not as bad as Liz giving us six month old beer or anything like that. Um, but uh, it could throw us off our game a little it, bit. It probably st still tilts it in my favor. <clears throat> it, more than he almost agreed with me, yeah. <laughs> almost, yeah. And also, because it's beer week and because we're going into the summer, we, we got kind of this cool, um, we thought we'd have some fun today. So we've got some of these um, pinfish tank tops hanging out. The pinfish is sort of was our first core beer that we announced. Um, if you can kind of see this one. Yeah, there's, this is sort of like a teal for men. Um, and this is a, a women's racer back in the pink variety. And so um, we thought we would give them away or at least give your choice of one away. Um, we'll, we'll announce details throughout the show. So uh, let's get started with the beer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, can move this out of the way. We want to start lightest to darkest. Darkest to lightest. How do you feel? Uh, about let's that? go. Uh, let's go dark to light. Dark to light. All dark right. to light. So tell us about this this beer that's sitting in front of us. The, the darker variety. Of the darker one, if I remember correctly. You should know what it is, Mike. Mm. Oh, you gotta smell it to find out. I know. I know. This <laughs> is. Uh, this is Lou Brew. Lou Brew. This is uh, so our, our uh, blonde ale that we do, Lou Dog. Um, we decided to do a coffee rendition of it. A lot of people like uh, Cold Sport, which is our 
our ESB or English pale that we do with cold pre, uh, cold brewed coffee, coffee in it. Yeah. Um, people love that one, so we decided let's let's think of, think of another beer that we can work with on that as well. Um, so we thought the light body of the blonde, uh, a little touch of honey in there with the sweetness would go really really well um, with some really good uh, cold brewed coffee. Mm -hmm. And so we did a few experiments here or there, um, did some calculations, and um, decided to go ahead and go for it. And I think the end result is actually really really good. I think it's uh, just a, again. Based on the on the beer itself, the basic beer, Lou Dog, it's a very light bodied beer. Um, just a, just enough coffee in there to make itself known, but it doesn't taste um, like there's too much coffee. It affects the color. It does. Yeah, normally the color normally the color is uh, is closer to the second one that's in here. It's a little bit lighter. A blonde. Um, yeah, it's blonde in color, hence. Um, but the coffee does add a little bit of darkness to it, uh, but it definitely hashtag adds. It, it, yeah, hashtag darkness. Um, you know, it blends well with the uh, sweetness. Yes, it does, um, actually. And uh, it's definitely a really, really good beer. So, on the nose, definitely a lot of coffee. I think mm. we did about a barrel and a half batch of this of this beer, yeah. correctly? Yeah. Correct? And we did about four-ish gallons of cold brew coffee yes. with our special technique yes. that we use. Um, very refined technique. Oh, it is. I oh, I, I can't even, yeah, if I told anybody, I'd, I would have to kill them. Yeah, we should spot. probably go in the coffee business. Yeah, we, we should. should. Yeah. Um, but it, we sort of had, we had Cold Sport, which was the, the coffee version, coffee infused ESB, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that was a big hit. But we thought, you know, let's give Cold Sport a break and let's try some coffee and some other things because I've had a um, coffee blonde from uh, three Swamp Head. Well, Three Daughters too. Oh yeah, Swamp Head one Last too. Last year we went to yeah. Gainesville for Hogtown and we had a coffee blonde, which was decent. And then we had this, I think, I think it was before we had Lou Dog maybe. What? Cop there when we went to Gainesville. I don't remember. We had Lou Dog at that time, okay. I think. I think we did. That was before we sort of tweaked the recipe. But anyway. No, we didn't. Because uh, the day that we released this, a lot of people don't know, the day we released this on tap right. was the one year anniversary of us actually releasing Lou Dog itself. So at that point, no, we did not have a, uh, have a blonde Okay, ale. so my memory is not completely corrupt. Hmm. Um, so we had the, we had the uh, I remember think, drinking their coffee blonde and thinking about the blonde and, and the coffee with it and just in general about how we needed a blonde ale. We'd already been toying with the idea. Mm -hmm. And then... We had the three daughters white. I think it's white awake coffee blonde. Yes. Which was a de which was decent. I think that's, I think that's, what that's it's called. It's yeah. just coffee with their beach blonde. Yeah, yeah, probably. yeah. I was I wasn't a huge fan of it. Um, you know, initially the this the regular beach blonde's not bad. Um, the coffee one, it, it, coffee tasted kind of old that was in there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, I, I'm not sure what their process is with adding the coffee. Are you a coffee snob now too? Um, not to say I'm a coffee. I just enjoy a good cup of coffee. Okay. I can't cup say I'm Joe. a snob. A cup of Joe. A cup of brew. Uh, mud water. Mud, yeah. <laughs> so this, um, the end result is we, we let Cold Sport rest for a bit. Now we're bringing out Lou Brew. Mm -hmm. It's the first time we released it. I think it's pretty good. There's definitely coffee on the nose. Oh, yeah. Some people, it's funny because coffee is one of those weird things in beer. I wanted more coffee, and some of our staff agreed with me. You wanted, you feel this is good. Um, yes. I think the customers are the varying opinion. On my side. Well, no, it, it depends. Some customers just, they really want that coffee, and they want it to be dominant. Um, others they want just a touch, so it's kind of like see chocolate coffee porter. Yeah. Some people say it's it's the right amount of coffee. Some people say it's too much. Like, yeah. You can't win with everybody. No. But no. Overall, it's pretty. I mean, coffee on the nose. Yeah. 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 Really, that's all you get. I don't get any malt on the nose. No, you still get that that nice little uh, note of honey, through on the uh, right, right on the palate, palate right yeah. through the finish. Um, I, th I really like it. I think this is. Uh, I think we did really really well with this one. I do too, and I think the acidity of the coffee, even though it's cold brew, there's st still a slight acidity, mm -hmm. but not a lot. Um, it balances out sort of that um, that sweet malt character yeah. of, of our yeah. blonde, and our blonde is, trends a little bit sweeter, a little bit at honey malt because people yes. just, you know, like I said, it seems to be what our people like. Yeah, I mean, we're in an area, you know, again, we've talked about before, we're in an area where there's a lot of boating that's going on, so people want something that's light, beach some beer. little bit. Yeah, they want a beach beer, something light and refreshing. Um, they don't want anything that's really yes, yeah, very quaffable. Um, so they, uh, you know, so they, they kind of tend towards, you know, like our American style weeds and, and our Blondales and things like that. Stuff that's light that they can they can put down on the boat. But well, this is a good one. It's sort of like a good. I don't know. You could. <laughs> I hate to promote alcoholism, but it's a good morning beer. <laughs> Maybe if we go back to the yeah. tailgating conversation, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. For a tailgate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's you know, coffee and beer. Uh, we, one of these days we're going to try probably a coffee IPA or something like that. Yeah. I've seen some yeah. pull it off. Um, some don't do so well with it, but um, I know Copper Tail had a, had a pretty decent um, cappuccino or something like yeah, that. that yeah, yeah, yeah. That was actually pretty good. Yeah, I, I enjoyed agree. that one. Yeah. So overall, any other comments about the uh, Lubru? Uh, no, I uh, just want to keep drinking it. Yeah. So it you is, keep it talking, is good. and I'll keep drinking. Talking is my specialty. Mm, mm. 
Um, are we going to do it again? Uh, I think we will. I think we'll give it some time. Build up. How the, much time uh, is that? Um, a lot. A lot good of amount time? of time. Look yeah. at you. You're just going to. You're a tease. We're going to release it. We'll, we'll start. Um, it's going to dangle. Well, I mean, we did that with uh, with blood sport. We made it once. We did. Well, that was because blood oranges are seasonal. Yeah. Coffee yeah. is not. Mm. Actually, we're we're working out. Well, I shouldn't speak too soon, but we're in the early phases of potentially working out a um, a collaboration with a local coffee company. Mm. Yes. Which I think would be pretty cool. I think it would be. And I think that would make it even. And their coffee is pretty good too. Yeah, so that yeah. could be something we. I think we should always have a coffee beer around personally. Uh, so maybe yeah. we'll we'll mix it between Cold Sport, Blue Blur, Blue Brew. God, it's gonna be hard. Blue to Blue. See. Yeah, Blue yeah. Blue. Yeah. 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 Um, so anyway, um, we're not gonna rate these beers, I think, because we we sort of decided. At least I've decided that for now we're gonna pause <laughs> on rating our own beers, just because yeah. I think it's it allows us to be more fair and. Um, I don't know. We don't. We don't want to seem biased, and at the same time, you're, you're nodding in uh, yeah. in agreement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I didn't tell you I was going to say this today, but yeah, that's I, cool. Well, how do you feel about that? You think that's fair? Uh, I think it's pretty fair. I mean, you, you can. I mean, we could rate them and, and say we're not being biased, but a lot of people are going to know that there's there's a bit of biasness to we it. We could come up with some sort of rating scale, like on a scale of like least favorite four stacks beer to most favorite four stacks beer. How does this rate? Um, for me, I would say somewhere in between, like, if we're going to scale one to ten, mm -hmm. five being an average four stacks beer, which I think we, you know, I'd like to feel that we set a pretty high bar for yeah. that five. But yeah, I'd say this is somewhere like a seven and a half, um, because mostly because I don't knock it for anything other than the fact that I don't drink a lot of blondes unless I'm out, like you said, on the beach or yeah, just yeah. looking for something I can crush all day. Yeah, I, I, I would tend to agree. You know, if you're looking at your MySpace top ten friends. Yes, you know, your yes. top ten friends. Are you old uh, enough to have been on MySpace? Oh, oh yeah. I was still on the email list until of course like last you were. week, by the way. You still paying for AOL, too? <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so your, uh, your top ten, you know, ten uh, friends. I, I would put this at a number seven as well. I think this is pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this one. Cool. So we're about, about the same range. So let's, let's finish this. While we're doing that, remember, um, what, was it last two episodes ago we had the Snozberry Sour? That was the episode just released, so that would be two episodes ago, yeah. Yeah, two episodes recorded one, last week. It gets complicated. Yeah. But, um, okay, so we, we were debating what a snozberry was. Well, so Sean, of course, <laughs> while he's editing, he's looking it up, and guess what a snozberry is? Rolled Doll is a, is a um, devious man. Snozberry is actually a penis. Oh. Yeah. So he, I guess he alluded to it in the in the books. Oh, okay. So um, which would, the book would have been? Um, this was Willy Wonka. What was the name of that actual book? I have no idea. Yeah, the Willy Wonka book. We'll just call it the Willy Wonka yeah. book. So yeah. we're we're you know the whole time we're we're sitting there pondering. <laughs> <laughs> we're really pondering yeah. the taste of a dick. So Pretty well, you know. Hashtag uh, not safe for work. No, no NSFW. So there's that answers that question yeah. for us. Now we can uh, we can go back with a clean conscience and try it again. Yeah. All right. So the next beer. Tell us about this next one. So the next one is a uh, beer I would I'm like. Hear you pronounce it first. I was gonna say I'd like to hear you pronounce it. Okay. Uh, I actually I believe the full pronunciation as I've heard online is Pierre de Sion. Pierre de Sion. Uh, my French is horrible. It sounds pretty bad. But um, it translates to. What is it? Prior uh, of Scion? Mm -hmm. Prior of Scion? However you want to say it. I should know this because we spent a whole like day investigating. We did. A lot research. of research. Um, but on Wikipedia. It, yeah, it's basically, just just Google it. Um, <laughs> it's, it we don't want to bore people with like... Yeah, just bang it. It's cool. Yeah, with, with um, you know, medieval literature and, yeah. um, and history. But uh, there, there's a pretty cool, like, um, sort of hidden meaning behind it all, which we thought was interesting with this beer. But basically, it's about a secret, sort of like a secret cabal, like a secret um, organization who, you know, th it's a French, it's a French yeast. Mm -hmm. uh, so we thought it has to have a sort of a French origin. And so, like, if you go back, we're huge Matrix fans, at least I am. Mike is, is too young for the Matrix. But. <laughs> yes, that, that's <laughs> But it. one of my favorite characters was the Merovingian mm -hmm. in the second, in the second um, film of the trilogy, and we thought we would go back to the Merovingian kings, which sort of have some French origins because it was a dynasty, mm -hmm. and so this, the name of this beer, anyway, is a tribute to that sort of concept. Now that that's all out of the way, it's a Saison. Yeah. 
It's our first Saison. It is, it is. Uh, well, tell us about it. So this Saison here, um, you know, we, we had, uh, we'd had the first one that was kind of similar to the style was uh, Pas de Calais, um, which is our Belgian style pale ale. Which uses a Belgian Saison yeast. Right, which uses a Belgian Saison yeast. And we figured that one there actually came out more of as a Belgian pale with that style of yeast. We were going for, for a traditional Saison. Um, we thought the ester profile was a little bit too high. Um, and I thought it's worth it. Too It was, it, it was. I mean, any time that Belgian yeast is going to have those really high esters. Um, so we decided, well, let's try it again. Let's try different yeast. And so we went French, uh, French Saison yeast. And um, in my opinion, and I think a lot of other people as well, I think it came out extremely clean. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, I mean, you can see from the beer itself, it's, I mean, super, super clear yeah. in there. Um, really nice color to it. Um, very light as far as ester profile. It's extremely light. Um, has a little bit of uh, what I what I say, say is like a lemon zest almost type finish. So there is no citrus in there at all. Um, just a profile from the yeast. Uh, but it has a nice, uh, nice subtle finish in there. It's very clean. Um, it doesn't weigh heavy on the tongue. Again, this is another one that's very quaffable. Very. Um, it's 5'7". And, and Lou was 5'4", right? Yeah, Lou was 5'4". Um, this one's clocking in at 5.7%. Okay. So light. Um, so again, it, it's... Not no, so sessionable, but... Right. It, it is. Yeah, I mean, if you wanted to, you know, this would be kind of ones that you, you'd be kind of hard to take on the boat. I mean, you could very easily. Yeah. Um, but I think it would kind of sit, uh, you know, especially if you're outside, it's hot outside, it would probably sit on the pallet a little bit too long. Um, kind of give you that thing where I've got to drink a whole ton of water just to kind of wash it all down. You know, it's very, it's got a lot going on. It's a dynamic flavor profile. It, you know, sometimes with the Belgian yeast, you know, Mike's talking about esters, I think we're, um, if you're going to talk about Belgian yeast, there's also phenolic character, yeah. which is that clove and that um, sort of um, spiciness. And I feel like um, the Belgians, you're either going to get banana, you're going to get bubble gum, or you're going to get clove. And I feel like from a Saison, you want something with a little bit more of like a peppery, spicy, zesty, like you mm -hmm. said. Yeah. You might get some banana, maybe a little bit of clove, depending on fermentation temperature and, and these yeast are, this is the first time we've used this yeast, so right. we still have some experimenting to do. But generally, Saison is meant to be, you know, sort of, you know, I think it's in the range for acceptable um, oh, yeah. ABV. Oh, yeah. For to style, it's meant to, be, you know, it was consumed by farmers after a long day of work. I, I think it's it's a great example of the style. There's some tweaks I'd like to make to it, but right off the bat on the nose, I get a little bit of that, that spice, almost like you said, the lemon zestiness. I get a little bit of banana. I, I was sharing this with Heather, my wife, um, the other day, and she said it mentioned that it tastes a little bit like Golden Idol. It does. And I yeah. can see that. I, I, could, I could see that, yeah. So it's basically a Golden Idol, which is our Belgian Golden Strong, with a little bit of like... Um, phenolic character mm -hmm. and and some like i said some zestiness it's got that it finishes drier i feel like it does uh, yeah I, th I think it does too I, I think it does too i don't know if the final gravity is pretty low on this one um which final gravity is basically the amount of sugar the, the lower the final gravity the less sugar is left in the beer which right. makes it more dry similar to like a dry wine dry champagne yeah i believe it was uh, like 1.010 yeah standard gravity and i'd like to get a little bit lower yeah yeah on that but um, yeah, like you said, the, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty light, it's, it's pretty clear. Any, any other way to describe it? It's got mostly pale malt. I know a lot of Saisons use Pilsner malt, and that's something we're gonna experiment with as well. Mm -hmm. But we had some pale malt, and we thought we'd try it with the pale first. Yeah. Uh, but it's pretty basic malt. Yeah, yeah, malt some, some white wheat, some pale, nothing, nothing too crazy. I don't feel like we're getting any, um, Really, the, the yeast is all work here. Yeah, I mean, pretty much everything on there is pretty light. I mean, hop schedule is extremely, extremely basic. How many IBUs on this? Do you remember? Uh, Range? I think it was, um, if I remember correctly, it was about 25. Okay. It was 20 to 25. I mean, just super simple. No, nothing crazy. I mean, really And low. these are mostly early bittering hops. Yeah. Late. And, and I like hoppy saisons. I think that would be something to experiment with. Yeah, I, I do. Uh, I see that as a growing trend right now. A lot of people are doing dry hop saisons. Yeah. And I've had some really, really cool. good ones. Um, like I, I, I want to say it was Arcane that did one. Arcane um, the last, yeah, last uh, festival we went to, they did one that was really, really good. Um, I want to say it was them. It, could, it probably is somebody completely different. What I would like to do is get this down to like 1.008 final gravity. I would like to whirlpool with some aromatic hops. Nothing mm. fancy. Nothing like American. I don't know. Not like Citra or Galaxy or anything like that. Maybe like a, some sort of citrus hop. But um, maybe like an Amarillo. Yeah. Um, something a little funky. 
and then just bomb it in the dry hop, and I think that'd be something worth putting in a bottle. Yeah, and I think that'd we be should pretty cool. That. Yeah. But overall, you know, just to, uh, I guess, bring it bring it back. Mm -hmm. The it's mostly I get a little bit of peppery, a little bit of a lot of lemon lemon zest and citrus zest. Yeah. A lot of zemin list. Zemin list, yeah. That's that's what happens when you have too many samples. Thank you for keeping me keeping yeah. me honest here, Mike. Yeah. Overall, better. on a scale of again one to ten, favorite four stacks beer being a ten, I would put this right around Lubru, maybe um, slightly under because, like I said, uh, Lubru I feel like is it's pretty easy to execute a blonde ale with coffee. Like it doesn't take a lot of it, it doesn't take a genius to get that right. The saison no. is a much more complex. Mm -hmm. Creature, I feel like we could do like I already mentioned the, the hopping and the and the gravity. I feel like if we play around, tweak it, that could that could easily go from like a seven to a nine. So I'm gonna give it that room to grow. There you go. What about you? Uh, I'm I'm thinking uh, cl close to the same. I think I'm looking at about probably in my my top ten friends on MySpace. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this was at nice. a number eight. Um, again, same thing. I think there's some things that we can work on with it. I would like to, I, I do like the, the dry hopping, um, so I would like to really experiment with that. But I think as far as just a, a basic first run Saison, I think we kind of knocked this one out of the park and did really, really yeah, well. Well done. Um, so that's the Saison, yes. which is uh, Prior du Sion. There you go. Thank you. There you go. Pas de Calais. Yeah. Look at me, I'm, I'm speaking French, you know. You are. Beer gives me a reason to, to oui, learn it. Oui. Um, to go back to this for a minute, I said we'd sneak it in. Like the hashtag to remember. <laughs> Are you gonna say that's what she said? That's... <laughs> the hashtag to remember is FS Beer Show. That's Foxtrot Sierra Beer Show. Mm -hmm. So hashtag FS Beer Show. Uh, remember that for the, the instructions later in the show. So the next beer that we have is today's release. Today is Thursday. Yes. Today's we like, Thursday. We are now recording mostly on Thursdays. Yeah. So I guess it's it's just the way things work. But uh, today's release. <laughs> it's just a day of the week. It's ju it's just a day of the week, but yeah. now we're going to reference Thursday a lot. Yes. Uh, today's release is a wheat beer. It is. It's American, American wheat, style. American yes. wheat beer. Yeah. And um, we've we've made some special adjustments to this beer. So we've about. we've uh, we've made quite a few uh, special adjustments to this one. So this one here, uh, base beer is uh, Iron Eagle. This is our American style wheat beer. On um, this one here for uh, craft, American Craft Beer Week, we decided let's go a little crazy. And so, like I mentioned earlier, we kind of joked about it and called it the kitchen sink. Um, so this one here, we did, um, we added yeah. into this um, during secondary um, fresh mint, mm -hmm. uh, fresh basil, or basil. Basil, yeah. You know, some fresh basil. Some fresh basil. Um, some uh, black peppercorns, um, as well as uh, pineapple. And so pineapple we kind of, juice. pineapple, well, the juices of pineapple, yes. Fresh pineapples is what we, we juiced, but, uh, but nevertheless, we, we added in quite a few different things. So you get, uh, you get a lot going on in here. Um, right off the bat through the nose, mm. you're getting in as I spill this on myself. Oh, it's my uh, turn to get to make fun it of is, you. It is, it is. And it's on camera. That I is know. the best. Eh, well, you know. If you're going to go out, go hard. Go hard in the spill. On the nose, it's mostly. You get the it's the mint and the basil right on the nose. At least I feel. Yeah, no, I I agree. It's sort of that um, the earthiness of both that mm -hmm. comes out. Mm -hmm. And the and the peppercorns were. Well, we we knew we wanted to try some pineapple. Right. It's like what goes with pineapple? Let's think about this. And so we we sort of went to some sort of. Not quite Asian, but sort of island Asian influences, and, and yeah. sort of found what we feel was like a good mix. So it's a it's a certain blend of basil and um, and mint, mm -hmm. and we basically you know it just I don't want to say chopped them up. We didn't muddle them <laughs> exactly either, but we sort of had a you know we sort of treated them in a way that we would expose maximum surface area right. to the beer. to release the oils. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, we sort of hammer crushed the peppercorns. Well, yeah, yeah. I saw fine. I saw you get out some aggression and yeah. uh, crushing some peppercorns. Which up. is that great. Was... Oh, you got a little bit on a little drip on your beard there. Yeah. Saving that for later. Yeah. Uh, so, and then, you know, basically dosed it for a couple of days, and yeah. the pineapples went in the bright tank uh, at the very end, which was probably just three days ago, two days ago. A couple of days ago, yeah. Yeah. So this is freshly caked today. It is, yeah. yeah. Literally, uh, probably about uh, three hours ago. And it's, it's, I don't know if we, did we say what it was called? We have not yet. It's called Traffic Obsession. There you so go. So we are actually <laughs> announcing the release of this beer here on the beer show, which yep. is pretty cool. So and you'll see Thursday, this crack two weeks later. Days. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? <laughs> We're announcing it release two weeks later. But I think 
We, we've been wanting to experiment quite a bit lately. We just haven't, yeah. like I mentioned earlier in the show, we haven't had time to do a lot of fancy stuff. This, because we're going into, I don't want to say like super slow, but we're going into slow season because here in Florida, the snowbirds, yeah. the well, seasonal travelers have left back to the north. Yes, well, mainly, mainly in our area. I mean, you, you know, living in Tampa, you didn't really have snowbird issues, but out here, you know, you're close to the water. Um, you have you have some. There's a couple areas in our in our snowbird issues, huh? There there is. So you, you hating on snowbirds now? Uh, I'm not hating on snowbirds. I mean, Gotta I be just careful. they're you know, all watching the show. They they probably are, from if, what? How many thousand miles away? Well, from Ohio and Michigan and Illinois and New York, they're all over the place. Our fans are all over the world. Are is, they? Which is what's fantastic about mm -hmm. living here in Florida. They come down here, we can indoctrinate them in our culture and send them back. To indoctrinate others. Yeah. So maybe the next four stacks should be in like the Midwest. Yeah. That would be pretty cool. No. I'm gonna send you. Have you listened to the <laughs> Phil Knight story? Mm -hmm. Where he's got like this guy. I forget the guy's name. And he's like, he keeps, guess where you, you're moving today? Yeah, you're going. Yeah, you sent the one guy to California yeah. and then sent him back to uh, to Chicago. East Coast too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Sent him back. You're gonna and be forth. that guy. Sadly, I. I <laughs> yeah. He, he he didn't say no. Yeah. Sadly, I see that happening. So anyway, this is a Tropic Obsession. We sort of named it because we wanted to feel like island time. Mm -hmm. A little bit like reminiscent of just chill, uh, again, chilling on the beach, <laughs> no worries. Chilling, bro. Yeah. Hang loose, is that yeah. what that is? Yeah, yeah. well, Ohana. And yeah, you know. can see it's got the cloudy appearance as, as is typical with your with your American style or any style wheat beer. Mm -hmm. And we- It's cloudy, bro. We, um, it's a, it's, to be honest, it's a, it's a variation of our Iron Eagle yeah. wheat beer, but there's nothing to be ashamed about there. No, not at all. Um, I'm just trying to think on the on the tongue, like peppercorn. You, you would never think that peppercorn in a beer would make sense. I yeah. mean, if you're talking to the average consumer. Right. right. They were like, "Oh, peppercorn. I just want real beer." I'm like, well, there's real beer in there. But it doesn't taste like it, it's not like you put pepper on your food. It's it's like a um, like a again a spicy aromatic. Mm -hmm. You know, most of taste is in the nose too. Right. So I, I feel like it lends a. I, this is the first time we've done this. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, first time we've ever played. I want to do uh, it more. We should. We definitely should. Yeah, first time we were getting to play with uh, kind of bigger things like that. Like we did our, you know, Guns and Ammo, our, our first sour that we did. Yeah, we played with fun. the mint at that point. Um, that was all, that was pretty cool. Um, you know, there you got some. You got more earthy notes out of it than than kind of you know. Whatever. But it was a sour, so it was super aggressively right. tart. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but this is not tart. It's it's clean. It's it finishes crisp, but that. You get you get sort of like uh, as I mentioned when we were we were getting ready to keg this. No flavors dominant, so it's not all peppercorn or all basil or all mint or right. all pineapple. It's all blended well yeah. in a way that a good drink should be. And if you yeah. just think about like if you go to a a good bar, let's just say, and they're doing um, mixology, and you get like a, a nice fresh blended drink, and it's are you, <laughs> I sound like like a Tampa <laughs> elitist, don't I? You do. So if you've got Tom Cruise in there and he's shaking up some mixers for you. Know, for they're you. muddling things. It's like that deconstructed martini commercial that was at Bacardi or something like that. But anyway, I feel like if you get a good mixed drink, uh -huh. like a really good fresh mixed drink, it's, yeah. it's going to taste just fresh. That's all you taste is fresh. Yeah. And I feel like that's what you get in this beer. Yeah, yeah I, think it's, I think we did really, really well with this one. I'm uh, pretty happy. I am too. So this is... Um, I don't, we'll see what the public thinks. Yeah. We're the first ones to drink this. In yeah. fact, nobody in the staff has had it either. Yeah, I don't think anyone so else has, yeah. We, we're unveiling it today. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, hopefully I, the public enjoys it. And, you know, I could see this becoming a, a hit, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. You know, back in, I, I probably told you this story, but I don't, I don't, maybe the camera too, but back when I was home brewing, um, Heather, my wife, really liked a beer called Five Rabbit, Five Lizard, which was like a passion fruit wheat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was chasing that beer. I was trying to. Well, it's uh, Five Lizard is the name of the beer. Five Rabbit's the name that's of the beer. Five Rabbit, Five Lizard. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, I was chasing this recipe, trying to. Cause she wanted to drink it, and I, by the time I felt like I got it right, she was already on to the next recipe that she wanted me to make. Yeah, of course. Funny how that works. But um, I feel like this is sort of like, I, I always wonder, like, how do you end up on a passion fruit wheat like that? And I feel like the way we ended up on this is similar to how yeah. other recipes are born. So I'm ho I'm hopeful, yeah. you know, cautiously optimistic that it becomes something people like. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think uh, I think everyone will, pretty, will like this a lot, especially if they want to kind of go, they want to branch out to something kind of crazy, something that's some, somewhat out of their wheelhouse, but still somewhat safe. I mean, yeah. a lot of people drink Iron Eagle here. Um, you know, people drink like the American style wheats. So if you kind of get them out of the wheelhouse to try something crazy, 
you know, this is definitely Did right up there. Did you see him out of their whorehouse? Is that what you said? Yeah. I thought so. Oh, yeah. Thought right so. out of their whorehouse. You see how Mike thinks about you, mm. Joe Public. Luckily, you have me to watch your back. Just a bunch of whores. Uh, I would like a little bit more pineapple, uh, just because I feel like if it says pineapple, people are going to want more pineapple. Yeah. I, I, I don't like super juicy beers. We talked about blood sport. Right, maybe. right. Ver, um, varying the, the amount of, of juice in the beer. Mm -hmm. So maybe just a touch more, but I don't think too much more. Right. Um, this is the sort of thing, I, honestly, you could put an umbrella in it and like it deserves that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's not hokey. It's, no. Just the umbrella would be really hokey. But you, there's some different treat. Even take this base beer, there's some different treatments you could take on it. You could add a little bit of spice, you could add a little bit of. Um, oh, you could do it. Yeah. I mean, things like that. I mean, you know. Play around, yeah. Like as, as far as spice, I mean, you know, put it in a randle, put jalapenos in the randle, yeah, and then randle this over some jalapeno, fresh jalapeno, some really, really Even bright green like ones. Even with the seeds in spicy it, spicy red peppers or like yeah, you know, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Randle that through there. Get some get some spice notes on. It. I think it would be really, really good. You can even throw some sage in there. I mean, there's a there's a ton of stuff we could do with mm -hmm. this beer that I uh, maybe this is our next again bottle candidate. Yeah, bottle candidate. Yeah, yeah. I like what we're doing here. So on a scale of one to ten. Again, mm -hmm. four stacks beers. I put this pretty close. I put this at an eight because there's a little bit of room for improvement. But this is something I could sit and drink because it's one of those things that takes you on a journey every time. Yeah. We, we talked yeah. about, you know, schnozberries and uh, <laughs> this <laughs> everlasting gobstopper. Is yeah. What comes to mind for yeah. me is I feel like every time you drink it, you're getting a new flavor that um, sort of you're gonna sit there and think, what is that? What is that? Yeah. If you didn't put it on the menu. People might not guess. So right, right, exactly. That's where I'm at with this. What about you? Uh, I, I would say I need to start going first in a lot of these. Because you agree uh, with me. Because I'm not going to say I agree with you. I'm going to say I, I'm uh, number eight as well okay. on my MySpace uh, top ten friends. Mm. Is uh, I'm at a number eight as well. Same thing. I, I think the uh, we should definitely look at adding some uh, some more pineapple into it. I, th I think everything else of the beer is really good. Um, but, yeah, I think pineapple you would take really. take lime and then make like a pineapple mojito. You could. You could, yeah. Well, you don't like that idea. No, not really. I think I think. No. Right. Well, we'll I think see. The, we'll I think the, we got enough. To, enough we do. To yeah, I mean, we have a Randall, and uh, I think this is something we can play we around with do that on this there. weekend. We could bust out the Randall. Oh yeah, we haven't busted that plot thing out in a while. So before we go into the mystery beer, we'll grab Dave. Dave has uh, been generous. He's been opening the the, the bar yeah. while we do the show, and well, he's the been whole trying place. to be quiet. And I feel yeah. bad for him. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Dave. But um, we're gonna have Dave come bring the mystery beer in a minute. But just for a second. Um, wanted to let everybody know about four stacks where we're at. If 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 you if you're a regular here, you know where we're at. But if you if you're just catching the show <laughs> randomly on YouTube or Facebook, yeah, yeah. we're in Apollo Beach, Florida. It's 20 minutes south of Tampa. It's a fantastic area. It doesn't it's not as fancy as it sounds. Apollo Beach sounds yes. great. Oh, it's very fancy. I live here. It's on the bay so. side. It is. It nice. is. Yeah, nice. we're on the bay side. So I mean, we're right between uh, two uh, very nice neighborhoods. Tampa? Yeah. Well, oh, about, yeah. As far as areas, yeah. yeah I mean, Mirror Bay right here. Yeah. Beautiful homes. Harbor Isles, beautiful homes. Yeah. Um, you got Ruskin, where all the tomato plants are, which is. That's um, a nice way to put it. Yeah. That's a very nice way to put it. A lot nicer than I can definitely put it. Yeah, well, you know, so, I'm good with words. Well, I mean, you know, the cool thing for us is we're right on the water. I mean, no matter, you know, you go five minutes down the road and you're going to hit water in some way, shape, or form. Um, you get you on know, the boat. Yeah, you, you, hose, you, yeah, yeah there you go. You got your boats and hose. Just don't, uh, what, what was it? Uh, don't boat and drive. Don't boat and drive. Don't yeah. boat and drive. Stay tuned for the next segment. We're gonna we're gonna take a quick pause, get our blindfolds on, grab Dave, and uh, at the end or sometime in the middle of that segment, we're gonna we're gonna give the final piece of information for how you can claim your free pinfish tank top. There you go. But yeah. only one, only one. Yeah. The first person. First person. The first person to follow these instructions. Yeah. All right. Pause time. Yeah. See you guys we'll see in a minute. In about three seconds. Yeah. Are All we right. recording? Yeah, we're recording. Oh, so man. so we're. Dave, are you still here? I'm still here. Okay, you're good to go. Do whatever you got to do. Okay. All right. Thanks, man. No problem. Uh, all right, so we're back. We, we are. Yours. We're sort of. Um, ah, you're the man, Dave. What did he say? I said I told him. He said, "Did I, did I find mine?" And he pushed the oh, glass towards my hand. He's helping you out. Yes. So, so we're actually open now. This is sort of a first semi-live. Yes, show. Yes, this is a quasi live. Yeah, you can hear the popcorn. In yeah, the and popcorn. Music now. is turned down. Immediately, I'm hungry. The hot the spurs are playing uh, yes. Leicester City, so there's a lot going on right now. So we're gonna try and get through this one quick. So we got a mystery beer. Dave poured it in the back, so we don't even know if it's a can or bottle. Yeah, I don't Andy know. Dave, he's he's a smart man. He is. Okay, so I'm smelling stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I kind of hope so. What I don't know is if he left more sample here or not. I guess the can or bottle's not here, so we're on our own with a single sample. 
Wow. Mm, this tastes familiar. It does. Okay, so really fruit. Re yeah, it's really audience, sweet. A lot of fruit. Fruit, fruit like um, it's not a snozzberry. No, it's definitely. I'm not getting a lot of snozzberries across my tongue. It's like a, a muddled fruit flavor. Yeah. Like a raspberry. That's what I'm thinking. I I, I, I will. Uh, God damn, I hate you. Like a yeah, bad raspberry. It's uh, it's a raspberry syrup. It's not a fresh raspberry. It's a raspberry syrup. It's not quite a purple haze. Mm, no, because yeah, purple haze is a little more balanced than this. Purple haze is cleaner and crisper. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's go through the motions here. Bottle can. I'm gonna guess it's a bottle. I'm gonna guess. I would guess it's like a. It's not a lining Kugel shandy, which we've had before. Yeah. Raspberry. Yeah, well, I'd be surprised if it was blueberry cobbler. Because that just came out. It's came out bad. again? It's too no, well, it's, it, it, there's that, that cinnamon flavor is not in there. Yeah, it is too crappy. Yeah. Very syrupy. It's like a. It's almost like a pilsner. Like a, a fruit pilsner. Does it. Uh, no, but doesn't Lion doesn't and Cool have like a mixed berry? Yeah. Oh, that's what, I, I mean, because I get the raspberry on there. I want to say I get some blueberry, because you get a little bit of that, that tartness that you sometimes get with blueberry. So that's what I'm wondering if that's, uh, if that's coming off, uh, if it's that. Mm. That's really tough. This is, ri yeah. God damn you, Dave. Two for two so far. Yeah. Oh, I know. Good job, but God damn it. Well, we had that one time we thought it was a Mexican lager. It's Bex, right? Yeah. This to me has a no, well, it was No, we thought it was Mexican. Well, it was, um, it was Red Stripe. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And that was, that was, the, day, that was the first Dave mystery beer. There's nothing on the nose except just this fruit syrup candy flavor. Yeah, I think I think this is definitely from a bottle. I don't see anybody canning anything similar to this. Mm. But there's no residual. So no. in that sense, it's it's pretty decent. I'm trying to think of who has like a berry flavored beer. Um, I, I, I'm gonna guess like a a pilsner. Is that's my base style, a pilsner. Mm-hmm. Or some sort of pale ale. But. Mm. I'm I'm truly stumped again. Man, I'm I'm going I'm pacing through the uh, through the aisle right now at, at the local local grocery store, trying to figure out what the hell this could be. It's syrup. Oh yeah, that's what I said earlier. It's it kind of sits there. It just it sits right on the tongue. It's like a, get, you get a little flimmy in the uh, in the back. It's like blueberry throat. syrup, like on pancakes, is what it tastes like to me, but not clean, not like fresh sugar. No. Sugar. Sugar. Um. What is out there? There's there's, Lion and Kugels. Uh, yeah, you got the you got the mixed, the mixed berry. Yeah, which is that's that's kind of uh, rum I head. It's more of a thinner beer. I feel like this has more mouthfeel. Uh, no, I, I think you're getting that because of the fruit. I think you're getting that density because of. I the, just, I just know I've had lining kugels plenty, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a um, some sort of berry, blue moon or shock top. Do they do one? Doesn't does shock top do? I thought shock, doesn't shock top do no, one? No, it's not. It doesn't have the wheat. But I feel like it's on that quality level. Um, who else is out there? Who's out there in a the plane with, with, the, with the berry flavors? Anybody you can think of besides Line Cool? That's Shot the, I mean, that's the, yeah, Line Cool, Blue Shot Moon. Top, Blue Moon, or the, the three biggest Blue Moon, one. I think, has a berry, but, and they do new stuff all the time. Yeah, because they, they did a pretzel beer, which I thought was kind of weird. It's actually not horrible. The fact that you know that is... We have a couple in the house. Heather likes it. Of course.
course. Well, she did. Not anymore. Not she hates that. the beer that I make, but loves that. Well, she doesn't hate the beer you make. She's a traveler. She likes a beer for five minutes and then goes on. Oh. Place. Um. What is it? The the tra um, traveler that I just get. Did I give you an answer? No. Well, that's what I was thinking. Is doesn't the, the traveler don't they do like a raspberry shandy? Who's the traveler? The, the um, oh yeah, it's um. Oh shit. I can't remember. He and I know the story behind the guy. He's um, the traveler is a beer. Is a beer yeah, beer. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, he wears like the the tiny little rim glasses, um, and he does like a he does uh, he does like an orange shandy. And I want to say he does. I think he does like a raspberry shandy too. I'm gonna go in a different direction. I'm gonna go with like a, um, a blue point. Is it Blue Point? Is the is the one that we yeah Blue purchased? Point? That's yeah yeah. Like a Blue Point um, blueberry. There's like a blue. No, it's it's the there's a blue. It's a dog on a label. Oh, uh, Sea Dog. You talking about that one? Maybe. You know what? That's uh well because you have we well, have two of them. You have you have Sea Dog, which is the one there. They have the one uh, kind of brew pub thing that used to be in Clearwater. Blue, doesn't Blue Point have a dog on it? No, you're thinking there's another one. Um, that I wish I could remember the damn name of it. But the Sea Dog one, that's not bad. It's like Sea Dog Blue Point. It's toasted blueberry. Or isn't there like a toasted blueberry or like a... There's one that has a dog. It, there's another one that has like a uh, Fear and Loathing looking style dog in the front. That's what I think it is. Yeah, and they do a blueberry one. And it that's, might be Blue Point. Might be whatever But it's that not is. Blue Point. Blue Point has, uh, oh. that's something, I know what you're talking about. Blue Point's completely different. Okay, so uh, this is that one of those... It's in that trifecta yeah. of Sea Dog, Blue Point, and I, I think it's this other one. I forget the name of it, but it has a dog on the label. You it's know like what? It is. Blue label. I think it's that one because um, I remember drinking that a few times uh, at a tail at tailgating before a uh, Gators game. Yeah. Drinking some of I those. My yeah. My sister was in town. We were trying to find a beer that a blueberry beer, and we kept running out of the other ones, and and they had this. So. What the hell is that called now? It's it's. Um, I can picture the label. Yeah, I can. I can too. Well, we don't need to. If we if we can describe it enough. I think so. You you want to both go with that? That's what I'm. I'm gonna go with. Yeah, it's, it's not the sea dog. It's the one that has like the rabbit dog, and it's the blueberry version of it. Yes. Okay. Right, you ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Not even close. Where the hell did Where that did come you get this, from? Dave? That came from uh, Total One. Total one. Oh, he oh, tricked us. Look at this. Shock lay blue. And Do you know which one we're talking about, though? You, you know which one we're, one we're talking about? I, you, I could only hear part of it. Oh, oh, so the, we they, thought it was a blueberry beer. Um, it has a dog on the label. Looks like the fear and loathing kind of style dog. Not sea dog, but there's the other one. Sea dog is what I thought of yeah. first. Yeah. So this is like a sour brown. Yeah. Ah, oh, now wow. that is, this guy, he's up the ante. We both got way off then. So this is, it's Petrus? Is that Petrus? Yeah, yeah, Petrus. Oud yeah. Bruin. Oud Bruin. Wow. And it is a, uh, let's just. There's a ton of dark fruits in there. Trying to make up for the red stripe that I brought you. Yeah, oh no, that was perfect. That was a great beer. So it's 33%, basically 33% age beer. beer that tastes better. No, no that's this, fine. This is 33%, um, Pronounce that word? Uh, fooder, right? There's a couple ERs in there. Fooder beer. There you go. Um, and 60%, 67% young brown beer. And then uh, it's a 5.5%, 3 out of 5 sour scale. It's a Belgian. Dave got us. Got us good. Well done, Dave. Thank well you, Dave. done. Man. Is that a brown ale? Yeah. Well, it's sour brown. Wait. That makes sense. The sour is what we're perceiving as a fruit. Yeah, the, is the is the darker but fruit. But I was going to call it, like, we didn't do untapped rating, but I was going to call it, like, a, I don't know, like a... Until you saw what the name is and yeah, what it is now? Yeah, lower rated yeah. beer. Like it, it tastes me like a, well, like I said, residual. Yeah, yeah there, there's minimal. the residuals. Yeah, yeah. Now that I know what it is, I'm like, damn, that's, it just goes to show. This changes everything. Like, you can put anything on a label and make it yeah. sound sexy. But, you know, the, the beer blindfolded, it just, I don't know about you, but this changed the game for me. Every time I drink a blindfolded beer. It does. Well, I mean, like the, the episode you guys will see in this upcoming week, um, you know, we the, the beer that we guessed 
we had no idea. We thought it was a completely other different style, you know, not yeah. different style, but differently other beer from another country altogether. And this and, is not a bad uh, beer. It just, it has a little bit of a lager character to me. Just like a light, very light brown. Mm-hmm. But the, with the, um, yeah. It's a, it's a blend. It's a blended beer. Very, very well done. I yeah. Would say. Um, so that's it. We lose again. Yeah. Dave is now 2 0 against us. God damn you, Dave. Um, but it is beer week, so yeah. let's let's finish this up so we can clear this table and, and get people using it. Yeah. Um, the final piece of the puzzle is you have to come in to four stacks, and you have to rate all four of our beer week beers on Untapped. The rating is irrelevant. You know, if you think it sucks, rate it sucky. If you think it's great, rate it great. If you don't have to rate it at all, but just you have to check it in, and in your comment you have to put the hashtag that we used earlier in the show. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then, well, you just gave it away. Oh, did I? Yeah, it was supposed oh, okay. to be seated throughout the whole thing, so you can't ah. just tune to the end and then okay. You have to use the hashtag that we used earlier in the show. Yeah. And the first person <laughs> to do it and rate all four beers, yeah. Mike is, is going to get a picture of Mike in this sexy thing. Oh, yeah, you're going to get a get a free choice of a blue or pink pinkfish tank. You're going to get a calendar or 12 months of just this full of sexy. That's coming up next. Yeah. All right. Any final comments from you, Mike? No, I've. Uh, I think this is. Uh, I think we had a really good show. I'm yeah. really happy with the beers that we have have Great out beers, now. So hopefully uh, everyone else feels the same and really enjoys everything as well. And Dave, we're gonna have to come for the way to stump Dave. New new shirt. Damn you, Dave. Damn you, Dave. Hashtag. Damn you, Dave. Damn you, Dave. Yep. All right. All right. We'll see you next time. Thanks again.